I'm interested that many of your paintings are reminiscent of Hopper. And I wonder if you were influenced at any point by him. Uh, I've been told that. Uh, in fact, Laughlin Phillips said that when he came into a gallery I was uh, showing at. Um, I wasn't looking at Hopper until after I was told that. And then I think what the similarity is, is the loneliness in paintings. And I, I heard in a lecture once that American artists who do realism had that sense of loneliness. The speaker didn't say why, but my thought was perhaps because we're such a multicultural country and many of us do feel somewhat alone. I don't know, but I ha yes, I have been told that. Uh, he wasn't an influence, although I like his work. Um, I'm, I must uh, take exception to this. Hopper. The Hopper paintings usually have a person mm -hmm, in them. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are, I can think of three or four Hopper paintings which don't have uh, city front, uh, second story buildings. And the I saw one, one, one that had that motel room mm -hmm. with yeah. that person's car parked outside, which was very evocative. Mm -hmm. But these are evocative without having a surrogate in the, in the image at all, which I think is just amazing. Uh, and I was pleased to see that the right from the beginning, right from the Ellis Island series, that evocative, profound sense of these being populated by conscience, if you will, or consciousness, it's there. It's, I, I purposely don't put people in. Uh, years ago, I did that a couple of times, and I felt that. You were a voyeur when you looked at those paintings. And in, now, Hopper is marvelous at what he does, but sometimes if you look at his work, they're like stage settings. Uh, they're a picture. And mine felt that, that, that way in the negative, so I just do not put people in. Yes. Well, what are your paintings in the hallway, entryway, is of a red leather chair two windows, an iconic lamp, mm -hmm. and a couple of photos. Right. My dad had a red leather chair yeah. that you could not sit in if you were in the room. Yeah. I wonder whether that was a picture of your own home. <laughs> That's George Marshall House. Oh, okay. And well, my it, mother loved George Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I was asked or told that I could come in before they restored it and take some photos, and I, uh, I did uh, do a painting of three images of the George Marshall House before it was made into a um, conference center. It's in Leesburg, Virginia. I truly, after looking at your uh, paintings of Magnificent, there is a feeling of the souls that were there. I can feel it. I'm glad. Thank you. That's what I hope, that, and that you'll not feel pushed away, but a desire to kind of come in and feel it. The Ellis Island paintings were not only shown in Washington at a gallery, but they were shown at Ellis Island when it first opened. And they were hung in the dormer rooms that I talked about where people were kept, where that little uh, uh, crib was. And it was uh, very eerie because you could hear the noise coming up from the registry room, which is right downstairs from it. It's all open and it felt like there were voices coming out of the paintings. Mm -hmm. That was just a very exciting place to show. Yes, I wondered if uh, any of the, the paintings that you've shown us today, which are your choice of what you wanted us to see, have been shown previously as one exhibit, or is this the first time that you have had a chance to choose what you wanted to group together a Both lot sides of, of conscience. Yeah, that's the second part. I have shown a lot of these paintings, and uh, for this talk, I grouped together the few <coughs> series that I feel like are sites of conscience. I would like to comment on that because your commentary today, uh, very often someone will get up and speak about what they're 
exhibiting or what they're showing or about a piece they're performing. And it's not always to the betterment of the program. I felt that today your accompanying notes, your ability to talk to us was extremely strong and it added a great deal. You led us where you wanted us to look. You led us where you wanted us to see and what you wanted to see. And for that, I'm very grateful and I thank you. Thank you. That's lovely. <laughs> well, I'm so grateful that you remind us all of the concentration camps and that you have made these beautiful paintings. And I'm also so grateful that you didn't show the worst parts. That's because right. Because <laughs> that is horrible. I don't paint hard. No. And I, Thank goodness. Yeah, I just need to make it somehow okay and quiet. And uh, to remember the people there and not the hard. Well, your paintings have always given me the feeling that the people that were there have just exited the room, yes. mm -hmm. and that nice. there is still um, something about them that's still there. Yeah, it's a hint of it. Okay. Thank you. I would, I would hope that this is what happens. I saw a hand way back there. What are you working on now? <laughs> um, I'm finishing up some paintings of Umbria. Uh, two of those paintings are in my show. I'm also doing a couple of small paintings of the um, prisons and mental hospitals for a, an exhibit that's going to be at the Hillier Art Center, right, right around the corner here in December. What comes next after that? Um, I've considered going to um, Mesa Verde and looking at Indian, uh, our American Indian, Native American. And I thank you for coming. It's been a lovely, lovely.